I can't wait to show you my toys. Okay, this Rover. Corgi Toys Rover. Yeah, I've already fixed the, uh, or blued the base plate, as shown in a previous video. Uh, if you want to know how to re-blue base plates, just uh, do a search on my other videos, you'll see it. I'd like to be able to say, just uh, click up that link up there, but I don't know how to do that. I'll get around to learning that at some point. So, A pillar missing, and whatever broke the A pillar has cracked the clear part of the glass there. The, uh, cracked A pillar there, that'll be savable. There might even be a small crack in the roof here, but that's not too difficult. Obviously the roof is a little bit depressed, it's a bit sad on this corner. So lift to come up. So we'll have to replace this A pillar and just reattach that one. The rest of the car is okay, it's fine. To be perfectly honest though, the car is as boring as bad shit. Uh, and <laughs> normally I wouldn't really bother with something like this, it's just push me to sleep just looking at it. But uh, look, my theory is they all need to be saved. So I will save this one. If I can get a replacement piece of clear for it for the window, I will. If not, I'll have to make one. It won't be in that tinted blue colour though. Unless I can somehow magically find some tinted blue sheet. Don't like my chances though. One thing I am going to do and to teach you is I see that the go-to replacement for missing pillars are cotter pins. And Sure, they're a good basis for a replacement pillar, but I see people cutting uh, cotter pins uh, into sections and just replacing them. And they just ignore the fact that the A pillar has some sort of trim line or a body molding line on it. And they just leave it off. Well, that's only doing half the job. And if you're only gonna do half the job, put the model down, put it in a box and send it to me so it can be fixed properly. So I'll show you how, whether or not I use a cotter pin or not, because I may not, how to make sure that the A pillar looks correct. All right, I've rambled on enough. This will be a quick video because this one is pretty straightforward. shaping this bit of brass rod for the replacement A pillar and I'll just try and highlight for you the cross section if I can just remember where the camera is on this damn thing there you go that's a right at the tip there Very concave on the inside and one on a high point on the outside in the middle and then you can see here those trim lines for what would have been the edge of the windscreen and the edge of what was probably the drip rail along the roof line that runs down the A pillar on the side of the car.
bit more work. Okay, my pet peeve is uh, people that use cotter pins, and which is you know they they're great, but they're great as a basis for a pillow repair because uh, as you know cotter pins have a domed side and a flat side and yeah a pillars um, can have a flat side it's generally on the inside of course and the outside can be domed but more often than not they have a trim line whether it's for the uh, windscreen molding or a drip rail that runs along the top of a lot of cars and down the a pillar but people just ignore that and I watch uh, videos um, oh, Marty's Matchbox Makeovers would be the worst culprit for this because he, he's so prolific in his restorations and I watch him cut a cotter pin out the moment I watch him cut that cotter pin out and put it in the car my eye is drawn to that pillar for the rest of the video and especially at the big reveal at the end you might as well put Christmas lights on it because it just sticks out and you do such a great job with the rest of it and then you stick a cotter pin in as a pillar and you just leave it um, it doesn't have any of the lines the body molding lines trim lines that the original had and it's uh, it's just cutting corners um, so I've replaced the A pillar, that's actually a piece of brass under there, under that uh, super glue and baking powder. And I bashed the brass, shaped it, so that it, uh, as closely as I could get it, uh, resembled the shape of the original A pillar. And now I'll sand and file and, and um, replicate, as you can see here on the other side, there's a windscreen line and there's even a drip rail line or a, what was the edge of the door or something um, on this side um, that was the cracked uh, A pillar there where I've repaired it there so I'll re replicate those lines on this side and I'll clean it up inside and out because on the inside it's got a uh, it's dished, it's concave on the inside. So I'll do the same as that. Okay, we're almost there. And as happens a lot when you're repairing these A pillars, if they're just cracked at the top and you try and straighten them out, yeah, they end up breaking at the bottom and they fall off. So I was trying to straighten out the A pillar. It was actually a little bit bent. Had a a bit of a banana shape to it so I was trying to straighten it out and it snapped off at the bottom so well it made it easier to straighten out in the end so that one is okay that's not a drama and the brass one that I've replaced here just shaping the edge of the windscreen channel there but it's hard to see the detail and what still needs to be done so I'm just going to give it a dust with primer as you know, that's really good at exposing the issues. So we'll just do that and see what still needs to be done on it. usual you throw a coat of primer on it and then you start to see a whole lot of things wrong so just on this headlight here I've already peeled them back there was some flash die cast flash that was folded over onto the headlight so just got the blade in there and bent it back until it fell off but have a look at how terrible the casting is just above the grill there at the bottom of the the bonnet and be, and the grill there in between there it's just a 
massive, really terrible die cast blob. It's, it's really, it just totally makes the whole front end of the vehicle look terrible. It looks like it's uh, got mud pouring out of the bonnet. So, and that's actually, uh, it's not easy to get to. But I can't restore this and leave that there. Even though it is a factory casting floor, it's like it's on the front of the car, it's on the bonnet, it's terrible. And again, it's one of those things that your eye will just be drawn to. So it's got to be fixed. Yeah, this is going to make people wince with terror. Yep. The thickness of that blade, that uh, grinding disc is perfect for getting in the gap between the bottom of, bottom of the uh, lip of the bonnet and the top of the grill. If you make a mistake, well, that's what putty's for. risked the wrath of the gods enough and if you can't see that that is already about 37,000 percent better cool so now with my really small files I'll get in there and just sharpen the the edge so it's more square but even as is that's a vast improvement. So yeah, it looks scary doing it, but look at that. Brilliant. I'll just tidy up around the top of the headlights there. Okay, better look at it. Get in there with the, the blade and just get rid of those dags over the headlight covers. Maybe there beside the indicator as well. Not over the top, I've already sanded flat the uh, number plate uh, flat section there on that on the bumper. Gorgeous. Little dab.
Very pretty. Now to find tyres. Yeah, it's a terrible problem to have um, having all these tyres. Some are originals and some are repros. So these are all, as you know, dinky toy tyres. 30 and 40 series, I'd say, mostly. And some of the trucks too, like the Fodens. Uh, I think they're Corgi. But a different style. So, the Rover has tyres, treaded tyres, that are not dissimilar to that one in the corner up there in the top left, but obviously not white. Uh, so let's see if we've got anything like that. something akin to that. This is an original tyre. There's another one. And another two. Are they the same though? Yeah, well, let's see how we go. I've got this green tinted plastic sheet. It's quite thin, <clears throat> but uh, it's even pretty close to the right tint. So this is an experiment. Let's see how this works. That's better. Okay, I've gone for this plastic film that I found at work that they kindly donated. And it's interesting because it has a green tinge, which is great. But it has a bit of a secret and I'll show you. The secret is that obviously it's green, so it can be used to replicate that tinted green plastic that we find in a lot of models. But if you peel away its protective cover, It's got a very nice, shiny, clear finish in green. Perfect for that green uh, windscreen replacement that you want to do. But say you don't need green, you want clear. Well, on the other side... You peel away the green film and you're left with clear. How cool is that? This stuff's gonna come in very handy. So I've cut all the sections out separately and placed them in there, glued them in there. It's a little bit fiddly, but uh, not too difficult. I'll whack the car together now and see how it looks. Okay, time to pop these rivets in. Bit of nervous hammering. Just a little bit of glue. Doesn't need much. Needs the tiniest amount actually. It's 
always a bit nerve wracking. Especially when you're working with a very quick drying glue. Most of the time you can just force it in with my fingers as I've done there in the back too. Oh, and the front one just popped in there. Just give it a bit of a whack. Don't really need it. There it is. The bottom. As good as you'll ever get and what you would expect to find on a brand new one. Here it is, complete, the Corgi Rover 90. As you know, it was missing one A-pillar and the other A-pillar was broken. It was uh, this colour originally. And the Clear glass portion has come out pretty good. In the green tint. Not the most exciting model, but like I said earlier, you just hate to see any of them broken and not looking as good as they could. So yeah, on to the next one. Thanks very much for watching.